think what makes the Freedom Challenge unique is that it's um, unsupported and it's got a minimal carbon footprint in that you use existing structures like the farmers' houses and the trail is already there. What probably makes it the ultimate unique race is that there's no prize money and yet it's probably the hardest cycling race I've ever done and it does not need prize money because say I won it this year um, I'm no better or deserved than the person who's going to do it in the cutoff of 26 days. He's been out there longer, been worn out, had endured more than I have and so he's equally a deserved carrier of a finishing medal which is a pursuit blanket and so we all finish as equals. So I thought I knew the route pretty good and I left the Tains completely sort of unlooked at because it's a piece of geography that no one can alter but I didn't realize that Mother Nature could alter it with vegetation um, but I was ready to take it on and feeling good I went into that last hike and the Freedom Challenger said they'd cut a path but it only went two-thirds of the way and so when I went onto that path and I found it it was just I switched off and just went and when the path eventually came to an end on top of a copy I was like where the hell am I? I was completely disorientated. The decision to go across left of the river we, I heard possibly you could but I went across the river and it was 11 o'clock at night now and it was too steep on the left hand side. I kept slipping and falling trying to go up the cliffs and I thought Martin you've been silly this is a remote area you can really injure yourself and my bike fell off my back the one time so then I went back across the river but in my haste I slipped and fell in the river and completely drenched wringing out my gloves and then pursued uh, that path where, which is overgrown which took me about 45 minutes to go maybe 70 meters literally throwing my bike up and over the vegetation and crawling and throwing but I got through it and then headed back up the valley on the right and I went down where I normally would go in this thick ravine bush and I thought let me just keep going because it doesn't matter if it takes me long I'm just going to punch through once I've punched through this 100 meters I'm scot-free home Jerome but it just got thicker and thicker and thicker and eventually I was so committed with my bike that I just left it and went to go and see how far the river was. I could hear it and I thought it's got to be maybe five meters away but it was about 20 meters away. But the last eight meters was so thick with branches because of more water from the river, the branches were just more healthier, that it was impenetrable and I realized I'm not going to get through. And it took me an hour to get my bike back up that steep slope that was basically 70 meters of going down it to get to the river to go back up and then I went across and I tried to go another way down and I couldn't I left my bike went down tried to break through with breaking branches couldn't went to the right looked for another spot went at a different angle back to my bike and I couldn't find my bike and so for 40 minutes I, was, I couldn't find my bike and I was like Martin it's past midnight now what are you doing you don't even know where your bike is and in this thick bush and so I was just frustrated, got my bike, went further along and smashed into the bush again trying to get across and eventually three o'clock came, I was going nowhere, I needed light and then ended up just curling up in a ball and trying to limit all body exposure to the cold and it dropped below zero, my, coal, my, my clothes froze on me, they were wet, they got stiff and hard and I lay there in a ball with space blanket and just thinking Jesus, this is actually survival mode now. This isn't about getting to the finish. This is just surviving this the rest of the night. And came hopper six when the temperature even drops further. I couldn't take it anymore and then I knew that I'm not going to be able to get up. And then I got up before getting super cold and, or I was super cold, any colder, and started doing bike aerobics. Lifting my bike, pushing it left, pushing it right, pushing it into the bush, just trying to get the body temperature going again because it was necessary it was at such a sort of cold temperature and, and so dangerous um, as the sun broke or the light broke it only breaks at 745 in that valley with the steep sides I got a bit of visibility and there I should have gone 100 meters further 15 minutes later I punched through the bush which was a lot less thick and I was on my way up the steep slope to the finish and so that was almost eight hours of stationary movement where I was just flummoxed and yeah it was the record then for sub 10 days was not an option like I say when it became early hours in the morning it was I clicked into survival mode to survive that night in Satanes and it was a very humbling experience um, breaking the record thereafter was a huge bonus but it, it wasn't it wasn't about the record or um, the sub 10 days anymore it was just about finishing 
it amazes me the the hallucinations that one has because I know they're going to happen when you sleep deprived they're going to happen and I've been there and so when they do happen I don't fight it I actually embrace it and I actually laugh at myself because there's Eugene up the road sitting on a rock he's sitting like this with his hand on his chin and but it can't be Eugene because he's not here at midnight in the in the Bavians. but it, it is Eugene like there he is sitting on a rock like oh well I must, must, I must greet him and as I got past like of course it's not Eugene, it's a rock man. I knew it was a rock. And I also had conversations with my sleep monsters and I say, and I allowed myself to because it was entertainment for me, but it was pretty real. Sleep monsters is when you completely sleep deprived and you can't stay awake and these little monsters jump on your back and once they jump on your back, you need to either sleep to get rid of them or you can try and fight it, but they'll eventually claw you down. Yeah, the body's pretty good except for my hands have taken a beating in that the, this half of the, the hand, um, especially the, the two smaller fingers, are you know, completely numb. Um, it's a lot of nerve damage from the pressure of just the downward position of cycling. Um, probably going to be about three to four months of, sort of recovery for that. So your two litre containers which you packed three weeks before when you sent to each support station, um, I just put basics basic in, uh, like every fourth one I put a spare tube, I put a container of sealant to make my tie tubeless in case it lost sealant. Um, I put treats, uh, nougat and biltong and nuts. Um, I would put my USN energy drink, Pro Enduro. And every third one I put a recover, like you in recover, it's just as a meal replacement just to get calories into the body. Um, sunblock, chafe cream, um, it's quite nice because you don't have to carry bulk stuff with you, you can just stock up as you go along. And for me, the Freedom Challenge, if I had to describe one word to describe it would be that when you finish it, you're empowered. Nothing in life will seem impossible in terms of what you've had to endure.